Welcome to the lesson 31 of industrial instrumentation. Uh, in this lesson and the subsequent lesson, that means lesson 31 and 32, we will discuss basically the dissolved oxygen sensors. Uh, dissolved oxygen sensors was not that important, I mean, sometime bad, but due to the evol evolutions of the biotechnology in a very big way. So, this is to be considered very thoroughly and also uh, it has a tremendous application because the newer uh, and the bioreactors are coming up in the markets and lots of new product uh, are coming like uh, I mean medicines, then antibody which is a basically the I mean the uh, growth of cells. So, uh, and in this particular I mean situations we must consider the dissolved oxygen sensor that is one of the only sensors. Uh, which can uh, which can measure the dissolved oxygen concentration rather the partial pressure of the oxygen in a liquid medium and this will give you a uh, lot of other informations which is not uh, exactly measurable which usually we have to estimate so that is the reason this is uh, also this uh, i mean this dissolved oxygen sensors we brought under the industrial instrumentations and it has also i mean uh, i should say that, that it is also used as a i mean measurements of the dissolved oxygen in uh, environments like the, the, in the water treatment plants and the, the, the water discharged where it is in the I mean because there is some safety level of the water I mean dissolved oxygen concentration which is essential for the living animals like fish and others uh, algae and all those things right. So, that is the reason we have uh, taken this. Now, let us look at the contents of this lesson 31. These are oxygen sensors. The contents are in this particular lessons we will basically you will you will see this is a probe actually the signal conditioning circuits all those things will be discussed later on. So, basically like a pH probe we will discuss here the dissolved oxygen probes. Then we have a anode and cathode we will see all this in detail. So, we will discuss the various construction what is the theory behind this what is the uh, I mean chemical equations inside this all these things will be discussed the uh, typical constructions dimensions all those things will be discussed. Polarographic electrode, there are two types of electrode we will find one is a polarographic electrodes and there is galvanic electrode one need power supply and the do not need right. So, we will consider the one which has uh, which uh, usually do not I mean uh, does not need any uh, power supply or okay or a bias that is called the galvanic electrode. Then basically we will consider theory of operation the details constructions of these electrodes will be discussed in that subsequent lesson that means in the lesson 32. At the end of the lesson the viewer will know the working principles of the dissolved oxygen sensor, the electrodes of the dissolved oxygen probe what are the different electrodes, one layer and three layer model you will find that there are two types of model available one is called a one layer model of the dissolved oxygen sensor as the three layer model of the dissolved oxygen sensors. Okay. Then we will discuss the reactions at the anode and at cathode of the electrode. So, there are uh, chemical reactions which actually occurs in the both anode and cathode this also will be discussed in details clear. Now, introductions let us see the dissolved oxygen sensors or electrodes have been widely used both in research and industry. Okay. In the academics also we are using this probe to measure the dissolved oxygen concentration and also uh, industry it is also where they are uh, producing some biotechnical product, biotechnological product like uh, medicines and all these things like the um, your uh, antibody then uh, then antibiotics all those things you will need this type of sensor. Now, compared with the uh, chemical analysis, now other way you can measure the uh, dissolved oxygen concentrations of partial pressure is a chemical analysis. That means, you take out a sample and you take the make the chemical analysis. There is lot of limitations of that type of I mean um, chemical analysis because what will happen that you have to make offline you will not it is not very easy to get electrical output. So, if you want to control the dissolved oxygen concentrations inside the liquids you cannot do it. Okay. So, in that case this I mean the membrane based electrode which is called the or membrane covered electrode offers the several advantages right. That is the reason I am telling compared with the chemical analysis the measurement of dissolved oxygen in water by membrane covered electrode offers several advantages. They are as follows what are the simplicity their design is very simple 
okay. less interference by other solutes in the water it does not matter whether because if you have a chemical analysis if you want to measure the partial pressure box ends or the diesel box in concentration. So, the uh, inter if you have some uh, I mean other solutes that will also react with your sample. So, that will create problem you will not get the exact value of in situ measurement with lower time constant you know in situ measurements is a basically a new terms in the instrumentation that is meet basically means the on the site measurements. Uh, in the bioreactors you will find that uh, there are various uh, uh, parameters which usually we measure we cannot measure, but those also when you write the uh, I mean state equations you will find that those parameters is are to be incorporated. One of those are like uh, concentrations I mean dissolve box and concent I mean concentration is one then we have a concentration of the product concentration of the substrate all those things will be unmeasurable it is you cannot measure those uh, quantity only you can online measurement is not possible so you have to take out and and there is there are few in situ sensors have been reported but it is not much of use right. Uh, so, only parameters which you can measure uh, is the dissolve box sense concentrations by the electrical output. So, it is in situ measurement that means on the site you can immediately measure you do not have to make a chemical analysis of your sample. Continuous measurement is possible whenever you can make the continuous because it is electrical output. So, the continuous measurement also um, will be there also accordingly if the continuous measurement you have then obviously, you can do the uh, you can make the control also. Okay, so, that you can precisely control the diesel box in I mean in a particular medium or liquid. Real time control that is I just I said the real time control of diesel box in concentration bioreactors or wastewater treatment plant is nice. this I was talking about you see the many places the water are discharged. Okay. Now, if you discharge those water as it is in a I mean environment that will create because the plants and the animals ok marine animals they will need uh, need some sort of oxygen in a, in a when they survive want to survive in a particular liquid there is a particular concentration that is the reason you will find that the if that concentration goes down the, the fish and other animals will die. Now, once you discharge those waste water so in a, a environment that means in a, a swamp or something like that. So, or pond you must treat that you must know that what is the diesel oxygen concentration or partial pressure oxygens in that particular liquid. In that case also we need some in situ measurement so that we can take care and, and make some artificial um, increase of diesel oxygens in that particular liquid so that uh, wastewater plant. And bioreactor as I told you it is a I mean a vital uh, parameters which is only measurable parameter not only that it is only measurable parameters in the bioreactors. Bioreactors actually I should define as a, it is basically a uh, it, it is basically a medium or reactors where the where the biological cells are grown. Okay, that's the reason we are calling instead of calling simple reactors, you know, heard of chemical reactors. We are calling bioreactors because cells are grown. It doesn't matter whether it is animal cell or a simple yeast. These are all bioreactors. Now, dissolved oxygen sensors have been developed for different areas to meet the requirement of the specific applications. Okay. There are various applications and accordingly the people made different types of dissolved oxygen concentration uh, uh, measurement. Okay. The examples are the steam sterilizable DO2 probe suitable for bioreactors. Now, you know the bioreactors if I uh, take an example of the bioreactor it looks like this. If I take a white page. it looks like this I have a reactor here this is a star tank reactors. Okay. I have a starer right it is a consist of blades 3 or 4 5 blades. See it will rotate it will look like this there are several blades. Okay. Now, this is called impeller of the bioreactor. right and this is the tank in which we have medium. So, tank will look like this one. So, tank is liquid is there and it is continuously rotating okay, either in clockwise or anti clockwise directions. If it is there, so what we will find that there will be some eddies will be formed which will look like this okay, like this one some swell will formed.
this is eddies is this is tank and this is swell. Okay. So, it is continuously rotating and, and if you increase uh, the rotation, so what will happen? This is called the CSTR. Okay. CSTR is the continuous uh, star tank reactor. Right. This is called the continuous star tank reactors. We can see here. Okay. This is called the continuous star tank reactors are various type. You can have a uh, bubble column reactors, you can have a uh, CSTR, so a continuous start tank reactor. Now, the basic principle is nothing like if you increase the blades, uh, blade speed by a, because this impeller is rotated by a motor. If you increase the motor speed, what will happen that you see the uh, oxygen is very difficult. Uh, one thing you must know that it is very difficult to dissolve oxygen in a liquid. Right? Now, only places where the oxygen will be, um, will be uh, dissolved is through this uh, through this top surface okay to the top surface and top surface whenever these oxygens are getting in contact it is dissolves and it is this top surface is, is getting saturated with oxygen so this top surface is to be refreshed that means this lower surface of the water will go to the top like this one so that it will get more and more oxygen now if we uh, if we increase the speed of this impeller what will happen in this cstr continuous start tank reactor uh, there is a frequency of this water which is coming from the top to, from the bottom to uh, above okay or the refreshing i mean of, of this water or top surface will be faster and faster if it fast then what will happen that more and more oxygen will be dissolved if you lower the speed so the dissolved oxygen concentration also will be also will decrease right this is the basic principles of the bioreactor because the cell which will grow inside the reactor depends on the oxygen concentrations it is does not end here because uh, this dissolved oxygen concentration is a very vital parameter in any bioreactor because that uh, you know that the cell growth by if I look at the cell growth that whenever if I, if I continuously measure this dissolved oxygen concentration, so we will find that uh, initial stage what will happen that initial stage there will be a uh, good consumption of the dissolved oxygen. Okay. So, the cell concentration that, that means the dissolved oxygen concentration will fall right slowly fall because it is more and more cell is getting. Now, after some time you will find that the uh, this concentration is uh, getting saturated that means that means that during that time the cells are no more uh, no more consuming any uh, any consuming any oxygen from the liquids. Okay. So, the health of the cell that means the growth of the cell can be predict predicted also from the dissolved oxygen sensors output it might be the current or voltage. Okay. Now, uh, after some time we will find that the, the concentrations are getting increased that means during that time thus it is cell is totally saturated there no more cell will be uh, grown that is the time we should take out the cell from the this biological cells from the uh, reactors. So, I can see that the dissolved oxygen plays a key role not only to uh, maintain the growth of the cell, but also to tell that whether the entire reaction has total I mean is complete also the time when you, you should take out the uh, cell from the reactor itself. Okay. So, this will, is very important and this only parameter as I told you I mean in the bioreactor which is measurable. Now, this I mean if you refresh these things I mean continuously what will happen this uh, I mean it will be get newer and newer surface on also you can do one thing that means that if, if there is a uh, if there is oscillations of this liquid columns you will find that uh, uh, dissolved oxygen also will uh, oscillations of the liquid column you will find that that means suppose if you have a liquid here in the two columns you will find and if you may by forcibly if you can make the oscillation so that the liquid the dissolved oxygen will be also getting the oxygen will be dissolved in the uh, liquid through the falling flame through this one right this is another way there are also bubble column reactor in bubble column reactor what will happen you know if i take a new page the oxygen are purged through a um, pipe and it is going out right like this one through the in the liquid right so here what will happen again you will find that the oxygen are getting dissolved through this bubble column with there is a various concern I mean various method of this getting and the getting oxygen dissolved, but the you have to measure that is either through a, to get a continuous measurement either you have to make through a galvanic sensor 
or through a polar graphic sensor. So, that is called steam. Now, these reactors is you know you have to be basically be to be sterilized. So, this DO2 probe there are some DO2 probe which is suitable for making the sterilizable that means, uh, this probe is to be sterilized. How will you sterilize you will I mean at the you have to be I mean heat the entire reactor along with the uh, along with the probe DO2 probe at 120 degree centigrade which by superheated steam you have to do that. That means, from the boilers you have to pass that steam. So, that the oxygen will be it is sterilized. Oxygen microelectrode for DO2 measurements in human tissues, right. Then the first responding sensor for respiratory gas analysis, because in many cases the patients need to uh, feed the oxygen. So, that during that time that means, you must know that because pure oxygen is very difficult there is some power from impurity is always there. So, how much is the impurity also you can know from the dissolved oxygen. Measurement of trace of oxygen in boiler feed water, because boiler feed water is also necessary in a, in a thermal power plant that the feed water is the how much oxygen is there. So, that also can be online measurement is possible through this DO2 probe. Three broad areas I should say where the measurement of DO2 concentration is essential are biochemical engineering, then microbiology, biochemical engineering obviously includes the bioreactor microbiology and environmental engineering that means, waste water treatment plant and all these things. Okay. So, there also we need to measure the dissolved oxygen concentration. So, the partial pressure of the oxygen in the waste water which is getting discharged to the environment. Now, principal operation there we have polarographic electrode as I told you first we will discuss the polarographic electrode then we will discuss the carbonic electrodes. Principle is basically same one has been bias other do not need. When an electrode of noble metal such as platinum or gold is made uh, 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 volt negative with respect to the reference electrode made of calomel or uh, silver, silver chloride in a neutral potassium chloride solution the dissolved oxygen is reduced at the surface of the cathode. This is the basic principles of the a dissolved oxygen sensor. It does not matter I mean whether it is polarographic or galvanic. This phenomena can be observed from a current voltage diagram called a polarogram of the electrode. Okay. This is called the polarogram we will see the polarogram okay, very soon. As shown in figure 1 a the current increases initially with an increase in negative bias. Okay then it reaches a region where the current becomes essentially constant. It will be very clear from the next slide. In this saturation region or the plateau region of the polarogram, the reaction of the oxygen at the cathode is so fast that the rate of oxygen reaction is limited by the diffusion of the oxygen to the cathode surface. Okay, this is our uh, polarographic electrode you see this is a polarogram sorry polarogram you see here. Okay, this is you see this is the negative bias we are giving as you increase the negative bias you will find that the output relative current output will increase. So, at that some position you will find there is a saturation and after that is a certain increase that is different thing you will find there is saturation so, or a plateau region. Okay. So, this is a percentage of oxygen so the partial pressure of oxygen so it is increased as you can see. So, if the it is 1.5 as you increase the bias you are getting the the saturation then it is increases. It is a, with the uh, concentrations of the oxygen is 7 percent and if you increase the bias initially it will make linear then it will get saturated like this one. Now, in the subsequent you see this is a calibration curve. So, I have plotted here the bias voltage okay. here bias voltage is 0 0.7 volt I have plotted the percentage oxygen on the x axis. Okay, and I am getting a relative current. So, it is almost linear curve as you can see right. This is called the calibration curve clear. When the negative bias voltage is further uh, increase that the current output of the electrode increases rapidly due to the other reactions. Let us go back. You see as, as shown in figure the current increase initially with an increase in the negative bias is not it as you increase the negative bias current increases then it reaches a region where the current becomes essentially constant. In the saturation region plateau region of the polarogram the reaction of oxygen at the cathode is so fast 
that the rate of reaction is limited by the diffusion of oxygen to the cathode surface. That is the reason I am getting a plateau region or, okay, or a saturation region. This you see as it increase and the bias it is slowly increases, then it is so fast that is I am getting a saturation region here. Same as you increase the bias for a particular concentration, negative bias so it is increases, then it is getting a plateau region. After that, is a slide there is a drastic increase of the current. When the negative bias voltage is further increased, the current output of the electrode increases rapidly due to other reactions, mainly the reduction of water to the hydrogen, right. So, that is a different thing, we are not concerned with that region. Clear? Now, if a fixed voltage in the saturation region of the polarogram is applied to the cathode, if a fixed voltage in the saturation region of the polarogram is applied to the cathode, then the current output of the electrode can be plotted for different dissolved oxygen concentration that is figure 1 shows such a calibration curve. Okay. What is saying that the fixed voltage in the saturation region of the polar organ is applied to the cathode, fixed voltage I have given in the previous curve you see, we have given a fixed voltage of 0 0.7 volt, right? cathode then the current output of the electrode can be plotted for the current dissolved for the different dissolved oxygen concentration. Okay. Current outputs are plotted on the x axis dissolved oxygen or percentage partial pressure of the oxygen and the figure V shows and which is called the calibration curve of a polar graphic electrode for dissolved oxygen measurement. Clear? It has to be noted that the current is proportional not to the actual concentration, but the partial pressure. It does not matter. So, if the partial pressure is high, the concentration also will be high but due to the activity of the equivalent partial pressure of the dissolved oxygen, which is often referred to the oxygen tension. right? A fixed voltage between 0 0.6 to 8 volt is usually applied as the bias voltage or polarization voltage when using silver, silver chloride as a reference electrode. right? When the cathode comma anode and the electrolytes are separated from the measuring medium, with a plastic membrane which is permeable to gas, but not to the most of the ions. And when most of the mass transfer resistance is confined in the membrane, the electrode system can measure the oxygen tensions in the various liquids. Okay. So, what is the what is the key? A plastic membrane which is permeable to gas, but not to the most of the ions. So, the gas will permeable through this medium and through this uh, uh, membrane and when most of the mass transfer resistance is confined in the membrane, and the electrode system can measure oxygen tensions in various liquids. This is the basic operating principle of the membrane covered polarographic DO2 sensor. This is the basic requirement or basic operating principles of the membrane covered polarographic DO2. In both the cases we will find we will may use the membrane, we will be clear after some time. right? A polarographic electrode is shown in figure 2. For polarographic electrode, the reactions are as follows. Okay. I will show the figure 2 after some time. Reaction at cathode O2 plus 2H2O2 electron gun plus 2 electron is equal to hydrogen peroxide plus hydroxide H2O2 plus 2, two electrons, it is 2 hydroxide. Now, reaction at anode Ag. Cl, it will be AgCl plus C. One Cl is negatively charged, so the, it will release one Cl and we will get AgCl with one electron. Overall reaction 4 Ag plus O2 plus 2 H2O, 4 uh, chlorine plus equal to 4 AgCl plus 4 hydroxyl ion. Right? The reaction produces alkalinity in the medium of quite obviously you can see 4 OH, so it will make it uh, alkaline and a small amount of hydrogen peroxide is also produced right that we have seen in previous. Now, this is our polarographic electrode you can see this electrode okay. and it is basically a cylindrical in nature you see I have an ammeter which is basically a micro ammeters. Okay. We have a polarograph we have a cathode there is a membrane this is the membrane you can see okay. this is our membrane you can see here this is our this is a membrane permeable membrane. The gas can permeable most of the ions will be blocked here because this entire thing please note will be dipped in the reactor itself or in the waste water. Okay. This is a tank or the reactor tank or in the waste water this entire thing is to be dipped clear entire assembly. So, this whole assembly this is our, our probe 
this is our total probe right. You see electrolyte is here, we have put a anode here, insulation is here, there is a membrane and there is a cathode clear. This is the diagram and we have given a bias. We have seen that the, if we increase bias obviously, uh, that I mean the output will increase with the concentration right. Now, for a fixed bias uh, what will happen if I uh, obviously, I will for different uh, increased concentrations I will get the uh, higher relative current outputs which will be utilized for the measurements or for the control of the I mean diesel box and partial pressures in the liquid clear. Now, if I draw the actual diagram it will looks like it because you see this electrode as I told you it should be come in the tank and this entire electrode this entire electrode actually will find that it will be in the form of uh, it, it will be in the form of so very handy things and it will be in the basically cylindrical in shape. Let us look at that diagram. Let me take a white page okay, it will look like this uh, this one. So, it will look like this you see that a cylindrical in shape it is the entire thing. Okay. So, it will come down here sorry it will I am going to take a new page it is a it will come down here and we have a probe here. Okay. It will go down there is an anode cathode this is cathode right. So, entire thing like this one. So, there is another one okay, it looks like this one okay, the membrane is here membrane is here right we need let us support and all this thing that is I am not discussing because it cannot hang in a yard as you know uh, we need a support okay, and this will work as a your anode and this will work as a cathode of your systems right and we have a glass cylinder so entire thing we put on a glass cylinder it looks like this, it is coming like this. And a glass cylinder like this one, okay. It will look like this. There are various dimensions, I mean, typically in IT Kharagpur's, we made it like this one, and we put a Teflon here. Okay, nowadays, Teflons are very extensively used, which is 100 micron thickness okay this is uh, this diameter is 2 centimeter okay sorry this diameter is 2 centimeter and this diameter is 1.4 centimeter 4 centimeter like this one clear and this is quite small this diameter is 0.75 centimeter clear this is all the dimensions it will go to anode and this will also will get a signal here. I am not showing the bias because the galvanic also has the same uh, type of forms and this can be made uh, this can be made of anode can be made of anode can be made of lead this lead and cathode can be made of silver right okay these are polarographic electrodes insulations we have membrane here we have can use a teflon here this is a galvanic electrode okay so, this is we have shown that this is an ammeter, there is no bias, electrolyte is here and not insulation, membrane and cathode. 
galvanic electrode. The galvanic electrode is shown in figure 3, okay. figure 3. The galvanic electrode is different from the polarographic uh, type in that it does not require external voltage source for the reduction of oxygen at the cathode that is the basic difference. When a basic metal or base metal such as zinc, lead or cadmium is used as the anode and the noble metal such as silver and gold is used and the cathode the voltage generated by the electrode pair is sufficient for a spontaneous reductions of oxygen at the cathode surface. In IIT Kharagpur actually in the, our bioprocess instrumentation laboratory we have developed a um, uh, DO2 sensors which is giving quite good uh, response where we are using uh, lead as a anode and silver as a cathode. The electrode reactions of the silver lead galvanic probe is as follows. Reaction at cathode AO2 plus 2H2O plus 4E, 4 electron equal to 4 hydroxyl ion. Reaction at anode PB to it is a I mean positively charged then and 2 electron right. So, looks like this overall reactions will be O2 plus 2 PB plus 2 H2 equal to 2 PB OH2. As shown above the oxygen is reduced by a 4 electron reaction this reaction is called the 4 electron reaction and unlike the polarographic probe the electrolyte does not participate in reaction but the anode is gradually oxidized okay that is one problem with this. Unlike the polarographic probe, the electrolyte does not participate in the reaction, but the anode is gradually oxidized. Therefore, the life of the probe depends on the exposed surface area of the anode. Whether the polarization voltage is applied internally in the case of galvanic or externally which is applied in the polarographic, the operating principles of the electrode remain same. Okay. Operating principles same whether you are applying a galvanic I mean, I mean polarographic in the case we are giving it externally in the case of galvanic it is generated internally. There are some gases which reduce in the presence of 0 0.6 to 1 volt in the test medium. Examples are halogens which is chlorine, bromine and iodine and oxides of the nitrogen. It will lead to erroneous output in the measurement systems. Okay. So, you have to be very careful if you have the presence of this type of gas in the liquid where we are interested to measure the dissolved oxygen. Theory of operation. The basic principles of measurement for the membrane covered DO2 probes can be summarized as follows. If the oxygen diffusion is controlled by the membrane covering the cathode, the current output of the probe is proportional to the oxygen activity or the partial pressure in the liquid medium. Okay. Basic principle is same. The following assumptions enable the mathematical analysis of the pressure profile of oxygen in the liquid and the current output of the dissolved oxygen sensor. What are those assumptions? Let us look at. The cathode is well polished and the membrane is tightly fit over the cathode surface so that the thickness of the electrolyte layer between the membrane and the cathode is negligible. So, the, we are assuming there is no, there is absolutely no layer of the electrolyte in between the cathode and the uh, membrane usually which is a Teflon membrane. The liquid around the probe is well stored. Okay. So, it is mostly in the, in the case of I mean, wherever you are measuring I mean it is it is a well stored liquid. So, whether you are using in the bioreactors or the waste water I mean it is well, well stored. Well stored and agitated so that the partial pressure of oxygen on the membrane surface is same as that of the bulk liquid because we will need these assumptions otherwise very difficult to calculate the establish the basic the current equations. Okay. So, the oxygen at the membrane surface is the same as that of the bulk liquid. At present we consider the oxygen diffusions occur only in one direction that is perpendicular to the cathode surface. Okay. We are assuming in the one directions only that is perpendicular to the cathode surface. It is so called one layer model, but it can be modified to include the uh, effects of the other layers as will be discussed later. Now, suppose the electrode is immersed in a well agitated liquid and at time 0 the oxygen partial pressures in the liquid is changed from the 0 to PO. According to Fick's second law the unsteady state diffusion in the membrane is described as delta P okay, del P by del T that means partial derivative of P with respect to T equal to dm d subscript m del square P by del x square. 
double derivative of partial derivative of p with respect to x this is equation number 1 where d m is the oxygen diffusivity in the membrane okay, in the Teflon membrane x is the distance from the cathode surface it will be clear from the figure 4 what is actually 4 the initial and the boundary conditions are p equal to 0 at t equal to 0 initially there is no partial pressure p equal to 0 at x equal to 0 okay, at the cathode surface there is no and p equal to p naught at x equal to t m t is the thickness of the membrane please note t is the thickness of the so we start at the 0 and we end at t equal to t m x equal to t m. So, this is a one layer model. So, we have as we shown that as we are considering the perpendicular the cathode surface this is our cathode surface. Okay. So, we are considering at x equal to t m please note this is the thickness of the membrane because you remember that the reactors are looks like this okay. the reactors are I mean sorry the membrane the, we have a membrane here is not it. So, we have a cathode here clear. So, perpendicular to cathode surface. So, as we are going like this one, these directions clear that is where this is x equal to 0 and this x equal to this x equal to 0 and this x equal to T m that means thickness of the membrane. So, we are considering that this will to be insert in a tank or liquid medium right x equal to T m. So, x we are from the cathode surface we are getting this is our thickness of the our membrane this is again we are coming to the liquid this is the one layer model of the electrode. Right. So, we have a two layer model or three layer models also we have a electrolyte. So, we are assuming there is absolutely almost there is no electrolytes in between this cathode and the membrane surface right that is actually we are making the assumptions. Where T m is the membrane thickness and the first boundary conditions which is equation 3 assumes very first reaction at the cathode surface and the solution of the equation 1 with boundary conditions will be given by P by P naught x by T m summation n equal to 1 to infinite 2 by n pi into multiplied by 1 I mean 1 to the minus n sin of n pi x by t m exponential minus n of x n square pi square d m t by t m square. The current output of the electrode is proportional to the oxygen flux at the cathode surface. Now, n f a p m will be equal to uh, multiplied by uh, partial derivative of p with respect to x at x equal to 0 that means at the cathode surface where n f a and p m are the number of electrons per mole of the oxygen reduced and Faraday's constant which is f, f is the Faraday's constant a is the surface area of the cathode which is very easy to calculate because it is a pi r square or pi d square by 4 and the oxygen permeability p m is the oxygen permeability of the membrane respectively right. Okay. N is the number of electrons per mole of oxygen reduced, A is the Faraday's constant, A is the surface area of the electrode cathode and P m is the oxygen permeability of the membrane respectively. The permeability P m is related to the diffusivity of the oxygen by the following expression. What is that expression? P m equal to D m into S m. What is S m? Let us look at where S m is the oxygen solubility of the membrane and from equation 5 and 6 the current output i t current output because actually that is the only measurement that is the reason we are going for the membrane, membrane uh, based electrode membrane covered electrode otherwise we can make the chemical analysis. We need this current output for continuous measurements or continuous control of the partial pressure of oxygen or dissolved oxygen concentration either in the bioreactors or in the wastewater treatment plant. As function of time will be expressed as follows this is equal to you see the current output i t equal to n f a p m by t m multiplied by p o 1 plus 2 summation n equal to 1 to infinity minus 1 to the power n exponential minus n square pi square d m t upon t m square this is equation number 8. The pressure profile and the current under steady state condition can be obtained nothing but what will happen in the steady, steady state condition this term will go this term will be 0 because the steady state condition because it is a negative exponential power then what will happen if there as a time grows. So, this will be larger and larger because it is 1 upon this. So, this will become this converging. So, it will be 0 right as the time grows. So, only these portions will remain that is the steady state current output clear and the pressure profile and the current under steady state condition can be obtained from the equation 5 and 8. Let us look at what is 8 and 5. So, we are combining 5 and 8. So, we are getting uh, 
that P by P naught equal to x by T m right and I s steady state current you see that I T is a total current or transient current I should say not total current transient current equal to n f a p m by T m into P naught equation number 10. At steady state the pressure profile in the membrane is linear and the electrode current is proportional to the oxygen partial pressure of the bulk liquid right. So, equation 10 forms the basis for DO2 probe measurements ok. What is the equation 10? This is the equation 10 ok. So, this is our basis for all ok DO2 measurements or DO2 probe. Another important considerations in the uh, time response or the time constants of the probe. How we can make the time constant lower and lower because you see it's if the time constant is large though the bio process usually I mean we do not need very fast measurements. Uh, typically we can make 5 to 6 minutes most of the reactions are like because you see the reactions in the bio process usually it is quite long I mean it sometimes it 30 hours I mean 40 hours. So, you do not need like a I mean very fast sampling I mean you do not have to make the measurement very fast you can measure only 6 minutes 10 minutes, but still that I mean you must consider the time constant or the response time of your DO2 probe right. This is important issues or important parameters of a probe. According to equation 8 the probe response depends on the probe constant k defined as follows that k equal to pi square into dm by tm square ok equation number 11. A large k which means a thin membrane ok and not a high dm ok diffusibility uh, large results in a low value of time constant quite obviously right. A large k which means the thin membrane is thin and the diffusivity is high for the membrane is high results in a low value of the time constant. So, this will make the time constant low and the consequence the probe response will be very fast. However, the assumptions of the membrane control diffusions will be no more valid in these conditions. It is very contradictory. So, one way we are reducing the time constant, time constant also always should be lower for any instrumentation system for any sensors ok, Lo lower is better. Thus a compromise has, no, has to be made for an optimum performance of the DO2 probe. Thus a compromise is to be has to be made for an optimal performance of the DO2 probe. Limitations of single layer electrode model. In reality the assumptions 1 and 2 made earlier are not entirely satisfactory ok. So, we have made some assumptions at the very beginning to establish the or to build the theory are not entirely satisfactory often there exists a finite thickness of electrolyte layer between the cathode ok. We have assumed that the, there is no electrolyte layer in between cathode and the membrane, but there is a finite layer of electrolyte in between cathode and membrane ok. And the membrane because of the roughness of the cathode surface, cathode surface though we claim that the cathode surface if the cathode surface and membrane is absolutely plain ok. So, there is no chance of any I mean electrolyte coming in between, but if there is a slight roughness. So, a layer of liquid or layer of electrolyte will come in between the membrane and the cathode ok. So, that is to be taken care in the in the single layer model we have not taken care we have assumed that the, that is 0 thickness of the electrolyte is 0 in, in this that region. Also a stagnant liquid flame always exists outside the membrane uh, even at very high liquid velocity even though we have a very good start I mean because the starting you are doing you see in the reactors ok. Now, uh, usually the there will be liquid I mean because uh, it is inside ok the liquids it will be too inserted I mean. So, always there is a stagnant liquid ok liquid flame always exists outside the membrane even at very high liquid velocity clear. That means the liquid which is in contact with the membrane we are consuming assuming that is it is it is, it is it's a, a liquid flame is existing ok which is stagnant. What is that look at very carefully it will look like this one. Okay, so, we have a you see the probe is like this one, we have a uh, probe here membrane ok. So, we have a uh, cathode here and this we are inserting inside a liquid is not it. This is our membrane, this is our cathode, this is connected like this one 
first of all we are assuming that this cathode there is a layer that we have, which have assumed that the layer of thin liquid is I mean as electrolyte uh, does not present in the, in, the, in the case of in the case of one layer model that is not true. A, if it is if there is a slight roughness electrolyte will come in between. Secondly, the flame even though it is rotate I mean this we have a agitators either in the continuous CST that means continuous start time bio reactors or your uh, other type of reactors what will happen that there is a continuous uh, I mean movement or agitations of the liquid even though we will have a thin layer in contact with this one will be stationary or stagnant thin layer of liquid right in contact with the membrane clear. A more realistic model of the electrode is shown in figure 5 which is called basically 3 layer model. Okay, all the 3 layers namely the electrolyte, the membrane and the liquid flame have been considered. Okay, all the 3 layers have been considered. You see there we have uh, considered this is our electrolyte in between this is our cathode. Okay, this is our cathode. I can take this one. This is our cathode. we have a membrane after that we have a I mean a, a definite thickness of the electrolyte then you have this is a membrane thickness T m is a membrane thickness and this is our liquid flame thickness ok. You see it is slowly increasing so like this one it is increasing ok. You see here after that we are getting the main liquid bulk liquid but here this is a flame thickness which is in stagnant ok with the uh, with the membrane itself. So, we have enlarged though this is <coughs> very very small in the order of <coughs> excuse me in the order of micrometers, but just to explain to the students we have I mean, I mean elaborated it like this one. The effect of different layers on the electrode behavior can be estimated by using the one layer model. At steady state the oxygen flux J through the each layer or figure 5 becomes identical ok, but J equal to K naught into P naught K L M P naught minus P M K M multiplied by P M minus P E which is the we can write K E into P E which is equation number 12 where K 0 is the overall mass transfer coefficient and small case represent individual mass transfer coefficient corresponding to the liquid flame K L M the membrane K M and the electrolyte K e respectively. The overall mass transfer I mean resistance 1 by K 0 is then expressed as the sum of the individual resistance which can be given like this one 1 by K 0, 1 by K L m is a liquid flame mass transfer coefficient 1 by K m membrane mass transfer coefficients and 1 by K e electrolyte right. Equation 13 can be rewritten by using the oxygen permeability and the thickness of each layer as follows ok. We convert in layers. 1 by K 0 equal to T L okay, by P L T M by P M T E by P E, where T L T P L T M already we have defined it is the thickness of the membrane T L T P L and P E are the liquid flame thickness this is the liquid flame thickness okay, this is the liquid flame th thickness this is the electrolyte thickness okay, the oxygen permeability of the liquid flame okay, liquid flame only and the and and the and the that of the layer itself this is of the electrolyte itself this p clear a completely stagnant liquid flame was assumed here although it is more accurate to use the convective mass transfer coefficient is becoming more complicated rather convective mass transfer coefficient and the condition for membrane control division becomes that tm by pm will much much greater than tl by pl plus te by equation number 15. This means that the relatively uh, thick membrane okay, with low oxygen permeability is required which contradicts the requirement for lower time constraints of the probe. That uh, justify I mean you can be this can be justified because in the most of the bio I mean this uh, dissolved oxygen measurements we do not need very fast response for even controls I mean if you can measure only 6 minutes or every 10 minutes that will suffice. Same thing with the wastewater plant treatment plants also we do not need that fast even if we measure if you have a sensor which can measure the dissolved oxygen I mean partial pressure of the or dissolved oxygen or dissolved oxygen concentrations very frequently every second that does not make any sense. 
because you need to control if you want to control that means increase the dissolved oxygen concentrations in the particular liquid. The mechanisms which you have to follow that means increasing the star at speed or any other oscillations or anything it will take a large time constant. So, there is no use of measurements of very fast I mean. So, that is I mean a little larger time constant will be justified if you have a proper model in that sense. Okay. So, that is most important this means that the relatively a thick membrane with low oxygen permeability is required which, con which con contradicts the requirement because if you make the thick membrane low oxygen permeability obviously, what will happen that the time constants of the system will increase. For a given cathode geometry the resistance of the electrolyte is almost fixed. Okay. For the resistance of the electrolyte is fixed that is not very problem right for a particular geometry of the cathode. Also since the uh, also since the electrolyte is contained inside the membrane uh, it does not affect the measurement. Therefore, the condition for accurate measurements of dissolved oxygen becomes that T m by P m plus T e by P e much much greater than T l by P l which is equation number 16. When the individual resistances are taken into account the steady state current output can be written as when the individual resistance are taken into account the steady state current output can be written as. I s steady state current n f a p m by t bar into p naught. Okay. These equations already we have written, so we have just modified according to these expressions right, where t bar is defined as that t bar equal to t m plus p m by p l into t l plus p m by p into t. Okay that is equation number 18. In this case the probe constant k is modified as follows. We write k equal to pi square into d m diffusivity uh, of the membrane upon t subscript small t dash square with this equation number 19. What is the t t t that will be clear from the next expression where T subscript small t bar is equal to T m plus under the square root D m multiplied by T l over D l plus under the square root D m upon D e multiplied by T e equation number 20. Equation 17 and 19 show that the steady state current decreases okay, and the probe response time increases when there is a significant mass transfer resistance in the liquid flame around the membrane, which is quite obvious, right. Normally, probes are operated such that the effect of liquid flame resistance is negligible. It is achieved by using a membrane of low oxygen permeability and by the well agitation of the liquid around the probe. Okay. So, there is I mean all this compromise we have to make. In fact, actually we in the IIT Kharagpur we have developed uh, a DO2 sense. Now, DO2 sensing if you look at so actually it looks like this if you look at the complete instrumentation diagram. So, it will look like this I have a DO2 probe sorry. Okay, I have a DO2 probe. I am getting a current, okay. current output I s steady state current. This current is converted to the current to voltage converter, current to voltage converter then we have a uh, voltage amplifier amplifier okay now it's a easier to make then we again we can convert to the uh, typical current because these amplifications will make us to the proper voltage because most of the converters so we have a uh, v to i converter here because once it is current to its current to voltage this can be uh, typically 
uh, I will get uh, the voltage usually typically the current voltage uh, is 0 to all the converter available for 0 to 5 volt with respect which will give you 4 to 20 milli ampere. Okay. So, this can be done here itself that means 0 to 5 volts this will give you now I am getting a current output which is 4 to 20 milli ampere okay, which is used for the measurements as you know industry that 4 to 20 milli ampere is a standard. So, we will get like this one moreover you see that uh, we have used a uh, I mean a plot what we found that we basically made a uh, uh, we made in a, this measurements we made in a, in a bioreactors okay, in IIT Kharagpur in the bioprocess instrumentation lab and we found that we got a uh, consistently good results though the uh, result inconsistent obviously, uh, but uh, when we measure with the uh, other sensors. So, there is a slight offset that which is quite obvious. So, uh, this galvanic electrode actually it worked very nice in our laboratory right. So, uh, with this I come to the end of lesson 31 of industrial instrumentations basically we have considered the dissolved oxygen sensing here and basic more details of the sensor four different uh, uh, will uh, will more details of the sensing will come in the lesson number 32.